Welcome back again today, friends. We're doing all the things. We have, I mean, normal messes, life messes. I need to take that bowl out to the pigs. We have messes and things and reasons for those messes and things going on. We are also going to get out in the sunshine and we are going to survey how, oh how, oh how, is my garden area looking? Will it be a flop? Is there any hope? Should I even get out of bed and try in the morning? Of course! We're gonna make the best of it, but I need to survey the land, quite literally. And you see, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if we're gonna get this cleaned up in this video. <laughs> I think we are. We've had some things going on in our house, but today is our pull it together day. We have had, I promise, we're gonna cook good food and not talk about a stomach bug too much in this video, okay? Just letting you know where I'm dropping you off in the Jamerong universe. We've had our first official stomach bug wipe through the house. It's lasted about two days. We're on the upside today. Everyone's pulling out of it again. The birds are singing, the sun is shining. We also, we had some great practice spring weather. When I'm filming this, it is uh, the last week of winter here in Virginia. And so winter decided to like try to snow on us again and we had ice, we had mess. But today is the first day like we could actually get back outside. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm going to get everybody outside in the sunshine while I do my garden surveying. We'll just see if time allows. I would love to start working on cleaning up my raised beds. We have some different plans and projects that are in the works. I'll share with you out there what Travis is getting ready to work on. We were planning before everything just went down. And again, it's been two years since this has happened, so I feel like it's been a good run. It was time for something to whip through here stomach bug wise. We were supposed to do homemade pizza the other night. And of course, no, Travis has not got to replace these lights yet, so you're gonna see flickering lights there. I'll try to hold the camera down on the island part. Again, it's on the list and you'll see what he's getting ready to do. But the bread machines are out, okay? We did a bunch of banana bread in a recent batch cooking video. Today, we are gonna fire these puppies up. Not only do homemade pizza dough for homemade pizza tonight, I'm going to keep these puppies going and we're going to finally get mm -hmm, big batch pizza dough made in the bread machine in the freezers ready to go for upcoming homemade pizza nights. All my hopes and dreams. I haven't done that at all. I have made no homemade pizza in this house, which we've been here three years now. It's been since the forest house where I was big batch cooking pizza dough. I have a dedicated big batch cooking homemade pizza dough in the bread machine video from YouTube. That one might actually be five or six years old in my YouTube vortex. And I made pizza dough a bunch of times in my massive freezer cooking from back in the day at the forest house too. But we've never done it in the Mega Mama kitchen. So let's get going on that. And then let's get outside the vitamin D, the sunshine, air stuff out. And so water kefir wise, now I've done kefir with dairy, but I've never done water kefir before. And these are, look at this, I got these little from Mason Tops, this kefir cup. So it basically, it makes it, let's see here. Yeah, whenever I pour it, it keeps the grains in my jar. So I'm going to, for the first time ever, pour out my water kefir that uh, has been sitting over the last 24 hours or so. The grains are activated. This was just the last part of the process. I'm going to pour it from this jar, leaving the grains into this jar that I'm gonna drink. See, I'm thirsty and I'm like, this is a great way to get my water kefir in. <laughs> so while we're making the pizza dough, I will be drinking this, but then I'm going to get my next batch going for tomorrow. Now, eventually I hope to get into, you know, doing having several jars going and having it for various family members who also want to drink it. But this is just me testing this out and getting it going. And I also just fed my sourdough starter. So anyway, these twist off and it has little holes on the top and it just all pours out. And then there's my little kefir grains that are in there and we'll get our next batch going. Let's do this first sip test. What do we think? Hmm. Okay, it's good. It's not tangy, there's a little sweetness to it. 
it does have a small amount of sugar in it that the kefir grains eat or digest or however that goes whole neat process to it but it's a healthy for me probiotic drink that i can also work on mixing in it's good okay so to get my next batch going we have them here working on the second bathroom if you hear drills in the background and we did give them fair warning they came yesterday to work and we were like hey you don't have to come in this house right now there's some folks i had one with it sunday and then they were fine monday and tuesday and then i had days of the week today's thursday so i guess overnight tuesday i had four go down with it and another one joined yesterday morning since yesterday morning we've been good we've been recuperating and obviously you know hydrating well and testing different foods after they are sick i always implement the brat diet right and so once they have a few hours in between being sick and not then i let them start testing with some water and if that stays down well we usually start with bananas and then applesauce i also did some rice in the instant pot yesterday with no butter no salt and pepper just season it if you will and all of that went well so today those who were sick yesterday are eating different things and again it just takes a lot out of you like you know energy wise so it'll be good to get out in the sunshine if mama could finish up what she's doing here in the kitchen so back to the water kefir there's my little grains in there and then it is a fourth of a cup of sugar that's organic cane sugar from azure and then half a cup of hot water and so then we just stir that up to dissolve the grains so i'm learning this through cultures for health and my kefir grains came with this nice little water kefir booklet and so this is my first time i'm supposed to be able to just keep this going and every day i can have a fresh quart of water kefir to drink now it can affect people's systems in different ways i know that kefir and kombucha are not the same thing but my body is used to drinking kombucha i'm hoping that it'll like the kefir also so then after this i'm gonna add in three cups of cold water Now I'll just give everything another little stir. And then I put this lid back on and you do not have, you can use a coffee filter. It doesn't have to be this. You know, I like to test different kitchen tools for us. And there's an open setting. Once I get it back on here, right. There we go. So there's a setting where I twist it. It would be the same as having a coffee filter and a rubber band sitting on the top of it. And then if I ever wanted to close it, it goes back the other way. Um, it can be, whoops, it can be closed and put in the refrigerator if I needed to take a break from doing it. Like we have some different spring travels and I don't know, maybe water kefir will go with us, but if it didn't, I could deactivate the grains, put them in the refrigerator with the lid tight, and then when I got home, I would reactivate them again and keep on going from there. So just been keeping it over here. Now, I had my kombucha there by the stove, and boy, I thought it would be hot enough there. I was doing a bunch of cooking, actually, last night, because that's who I am. I did baked chicken and roasted radishes. Of course, a lot of the family didn't eat it, but hey, look, we meal prepped. I also have that food available in the refrigerator. So yesterday, the kombucha got up to about 74 degrees. It needs to actually be warmer than that, like 78 would be really good. It has not gotten to 78. And even with my cooking last night, running the big oven. So I put it back on top of my dryer. I first did kombucha for the first time last spring. It's like my one year anniversary of doing kefir and kombucha. So whenever I did it last spring, I put it in on top of my dryer. And that seems to be, that was a good place for it that kept it nice and warm until nine months later, things didn't go too well with it. But I was able to brew many batches on my own and bottle it on my own and drink it on my own and all of that good stuff. So I've moved it back on top of my dryer and we'll see how that goes. And I will link my longtime recipe for how I do the 
Sorry, I had a message coming in on my phone. How I do the um, pizza dough in my bread machine. It's been over on my blog for six or seven years. I'll be sure to link that in the description for you down below. But I just did a cup and a half of water in this bread machine. And then, whoops, whoops, whoops. Oh, I spilled a speck. I won't tell. A cup and a half in the next bread machine. And then three tablespoons of oil. In both. Remember the days in the forest house? I would get this going in three bread machines. So be sure to check your thrift stores and plug them in and test them. And many bread machines you can get their books online. Three tablespoons of oil. When I have an appliance that I don't have the little book that came with it anymore, I just Google that appliance's name and search for the booklet, and many times I can find it. I've done that with, let's see here, well my first Presto digital canner, I couldn't find my little recipe book, and of course that's newer, so those are available online. I believe my other Presto canners too. I'll show you an upcoming organizing project is I had Travis pick me up binders and sheet protectors and all my different little recipe books that come with these different appliances. I'm going to slip them. I'm going to have a binder of them because instead I have this big preserving book that I use all the time and in between of all the pages are like 20 of my little books that I like to reference. So we're going to get that organized. And then next up is two tablespoons of sugar in each bread machine. Okay, that worked out nice. And then a teaspoon of salt. Okay, and then three cups of my flour. So I can only get my hands on my half cup baking measuring cup. So I will be putting six of those into each. So this will take a moment. Okay, and then it's two and a quarter teaspoons of activated dry yeast. So this yeast is dated July, 2022. Again, I'm not worried about anything being bad as far as rancid. It's been in the refrigerator. This was obviously a project I did in the baby kitchen and I've been in this new kitchen like eight months or so and it says on the back to refrigerate and use within six months after opening and no later than the date on the top. So I'm still going to use it. Okay. Travis is out driving his bulldozer scoop thing around. <laughs> so I could send him to Walmart to get me more yeast, but I'm going to use this and, you know, if we have trouble, we'll have trouble. And uh, if we don't have trouble, we won't have trouble. Okay? Okay. So let's just, uh, don't try this at home, folks. We can also say buckle up, buttercup, right? But I'm going to use it and hope for the best. It'll tell on me though if it if it doesn't work if it flops we're, we're gonna know okay and that's the thing I love about bread machines since my farmhouse days I've been able to consistently uh, well no not since I moved into this house but for hmm many many years minus the last three years so house math 12 years three years for about nine years I was able to run my bread machines and uh, be consistent with them and get them going many mornings as part of our homeschool day. I just put it on the dough setting. This one, you can see the button's a little busted there. This is one of my thrift store ones and I just have to like push it extra hard sometimes to get it to move down, but it still works. So now I'm going to do a little kitchen pickup and then get my folks outside for some sunshine. So I really want to take these rings off and label these. This is the 
30 quarts of strawberry jam that we finished. Mm, I mean, it's been 24 hours or so, so I definitely need to get these rings off and get these labeled and put away. And then this jam has still been sitting here since last weekend. Again, we got knocked off our ho high horse here for a couple days, but I'm gonna save this for this evening once it's dark because since we have a rare, the sun is shining, oh my goodness, spring is gonna be here kind of day. We need to spend this time outside airing out. So we have second bathroom renovation in full force. We got two toilets sitting over there. That's good, but things are happening. I think they're about to be done with it. Okay, so surveying the land. So big storm we had again when Virginia decided it was still winter. We've never had that meat bird dome for three years. It's a zip tie dome. That's the name of the company. It's never moved on us. So the wind took it. Travis thinks it's okay though, and that's an upcoming project. He's gonna get it back out for me and you know, re refill any zip ties it may need. He's down there now with his equipment. He's taking some trees out because believe it or not, I struggle with rural internet and another internet we need to switch to requires a few of those trees out. Also, and I have more videos I'll be doing for you coming out on this, but we had a bunch of trees out this fall. We've been having trees out the whole time because there's a lot of dead trees. And we still have many big ones right up on the house. And we're waiting for our tree folks. They're orchestrating a whole crane situation that's gonna take those out. And those trees are all alive and sturdy. We've never had any problems, but still long-term. Like if I'm living here forever, you know, I want I, the, the big ones that are right up on the house need to move. But we had a bunch of dead ones out. I think they took 19 out this fall. What that has done though is see, the reason we put these raised beds here is because after living here for two years, I knew that this is the area in our, you know, heavily wooded property. This is the area that gets the most sunshine. And they did okay last year. These trees were still a shade problem. And when my good friend Becky from Acre Homestead, I know we all cheer, when she came to visit me this fall with her mama, we had just had these trees taken out. And she's hopeful for me also that this area will get a decent amount of sun this year. So the sun is blinding me now, so that has to be a good sign, right? Of course, the, the leaves aren't out yet. But again, on this property, this is our best shot. So what Travis has done is he has rented a stump grinder and he's gonna have it for a whole seven days. During other tree projects on this property, he was able to rent the stump grinder for you know two days, three days. That location, they're no longer available. Sorry, we gotta dance around the barn for the story, right? New location, he can have it for seven full days, which he'll actually need for all of these stumps. It's self-propelled, it's gonna be a lot of work, but it's going to also be a, a helpful tool. And so here he is coming now, working on the projects. <laughs> Look, he's waving to you, friends. <laughs> and so he's doing prep work. I think some of these stumps he cuts down further before he grinds them. He knows what needs to be done, but this is going to take him all of next week to get these stumps out. But there's some exciting plans. So I'm hopeful that this here, you know, it doesn't look as big because I, I haven't been outside <laughs> this last week and a half or so. I'm hopeful that in addition to our raised bed area, I have 18 eight by four raised beds and then a few little raised beds. But then I want to do a whole big like in ground or doing our Ruth Stout method, our other methods of gardening out here. And when I was looking through my bathroom window earlier this week, I'm like, oh, I just don't know if it's enough space. But I do think, I mean, of course, I just want acres and acres of gardens at some point. We'll see, who knows. But I definitely think this whole area is going to be a great addition. And when Travis gets these stumps out, it'll be super. And so here, Tobin's off-roading a little bit. Uh, we do have a few beds. Whenever they were cutting those trees down, a branch fell. I'm still going to use them. They're just a little crooked in the side of that one. It'll all still work out. So we have our, let's, let's run over here, but well, okay, so much going on. We're collecting our cardboard boxes now, helps that we get a lot of Amazon orders. We're gonna put cardboard down here in the paths and then get all of this wood chipped this year, which will be exciting. And then way over here, so we have, and I don't know which is which, we have, I know two of these are garlic beds, and two of these 
our onion beds. And then this is October. I sprained my back and this, this is just where these things have sat for this winter. And then here we have been moving our rabbit cage around our pumpkin patch area on the days that we have good weather. And then we just have another collection of boxes here already waiting. But all of this will be mulched, which is good. More here, I mean, I could do more in-ground things here. And then we just have these. I did potatoes in last year. So lots of good things going on. Of course, you see the shade from the trees behind me already here, and they're not even leafed out. But maybe I can even extend a little more this year. But my goal for this year is to get all in between mulch, do all in between wood chips, get all these beds going, and then have this whole area here, you know, past the stumps to the back. I'm gonna look beyond my stroller here, on down here, and have all this a new garden space. Now Travis also, so he's doing prep work today, Tomorrow he goes, he's gonna be hauling all kinds of stuff. You know, he's got that dump bed that he really, he's real proud of that he likes on his truck. He can remove it later when he's done with it. But he's gonna run, there's free wood chips available. I think they charge like $5 a scoop to load it. So he's gonna do several hours getting us a big pile of wood chips. We don't have the chip drop off available here. I've tried, I've even requested it. I've paid money, I've paid extra money hoping that that meant it just, it hasn't worked out. But we do have a lot of people giving away wood chips and of course we have wood on this land. So we're also looking at wood chippers and wood splitters and such. We had a small wood chipper and it just wasn't working. So Travis is joyfully looking at more robust wood chippers. So he's going to do all morning wood trip hauling. We're gonna pick a spot over here to drop it. And then he's going to do at three or four tomorrow, he has an appointment to haul tons of organic compost and get us a big pile of that. But we're gonna go over here and I'm gonna show you another garden area that we're at least gonna get prepped this year. So I was saying the other day when the kids and I were doing a bunch of strawberry jam canning, we watched the Back to Eden documentary. You can get it, it's free on YouTube. We watched it twice in one day, so I'm pretty much a YouTube expert, haha. -ha. Okay, over here, over yonder, this whole space. So we had, so again, you see, I see afternoon shade, but again, give me all your tips, all you gardeners in the woods. Uh, but it's already, it's after three, so maybe that's okay. I don't know. I don't think I'm going to get to like plant this as a garden this year. Of course, last year though, you know, I didn't think I'd get to plant anything in my raised beds. My goal was to just get them in and I was still able to have a garden. So we'll see, but he's going to get, this is a big stump. I have to run over here. So this is a big area, this big stump. And then I wanted to just do this whole area. Let me run back now. He has his car land to the left and projects and all kinds of great, his shipping container, all of that. And he's got like, I don't know, two acres in that direction. So the, the guy is fine. Uh, but I just like to go from here. This is like a nice open area, especially once the stump is gone as close to the fence that I can, that, you know, wouldn't drive any animals wild um, to have things growing so close. And so what I want to do is put tons, <laughs> tons of manure, tons of compost all over this area and cover it with wood chips. And then just let it do its job and rot <laughs> over the next year so that it's ready for us for next spring. That's what I'm thinking. So some prep work for next spring. I mean, if I could do this whole area in corn, I don't know. I was not thinking of picking garden space when we moved in here. It was like the last thing on my mind. And then 2020 hit and we were home like everybody else. And I was like, oh, where do we put in the garden? Cause you know, everyone say it with me. I had huge gardens at my farmhouse only there Hold on, we're gonna take a scoop driving by break. It's a bunch of things. Over at my farmhouse, I didn't have to think about things like soil quality and sunshine and 
getting seeds started. I, I had nowhere to even start seeds. That wasn't on my radar, but it was good old fertile farmland and our neighbor had horses. I had tons of old age horse manure. I got discount plants once the season got going a little bit at my local Mennonite greenhouse. Thank you, sweetie. And then the me and my bunch of babies we got stuff in the ground and we had produce all summer and i did some can and started dabbling in that it was fantastic and then at our forest house there was so much predatory wildlife mama trauma with the bears and the coyotes and coyotes getting my chickens and just so much and here we bought this property and i wasn't thinking garden space and sunshine so we'll work through it though right but i'm thinking prep this for a big garden area even if I did the three sisters method with the corn and the beans and such like this would be a huge area and I would think for a large family plus others I don't know in this area I'd be able to grow a good bit if the shade is not against me but again in the summer for a good part of the day this area is blasting with sunshine so we'll be working through it Alrighty, got a bunch of good walking in. I have two different phone calls this afternoon that I need to take, but it's almost after four now, so that is good. Anyway, I'm going to get this pizza dough out. Now, if I was not also a business-minded mama <laughs> and had to make business phone calls, um, I would quickly get other batches going. I think that might have to wait because self-care, I need to eat a late lunch mm -hmm, before I get on my phone call. So I'm going to put, I'm putting bo both of these in this tub here. I'll show you, we'll cover it with a towel. They'll sit for an hour or so. And at some point I might be able to cram my food in my mouth and then quickly get two more batches going. I really want to, <laughs> we'll see too quick, Jamero. Um, so that way the batches could be going while I'm working. But backup plan, if all that can happen is this dough rises for an hour and then it's ready for dinner, that is super. Anyway, don't, don't worry bread machines, we'll get you going coming up. Let, let mama eat her chicken and radishes first, right? Also, the bomb.com. I love this buffalo sauce with avocado oil. I at Costco, I got a two pack of this. This is so good. And I I love spicy things and I love spicy chicken things. So if you're a spicy chicken mama, check out this sauce. Okay, mama's massive messes, we're doing it. So I'm a few minutes late on my call, but that's okay, they know I'm coming. But it was worth it to get two more things of pizza dough going, and these are in there. I think they're looking good, considering we're using, you know, you know, the questionable yeast, right? Alrighty, so my mama call is done. I got two more balls of pizza dough in here and two more, so this is number five and six that are going to the bread machines again. And I was just explaining to one of my kiddos that my hope is to keep these bread machines, I mean obviously we're gonna need, I'm planning on doing four because the other two are there resting now and I have two here. I'm gonna just go ahead and get in the oven. I think I'm gonna actually just make them as sheet pan pizzas because that's easy. The sun is shining, everyone else is still outside. My next call is not for a um, little over for an hour for now so I'd like to get these in and get outside for another hour with my folks and then when these pizzas are done I mean they can even eat these outside on the go and then later we'll get those other two just a little go together dinner it smells delicious in here I just did the sheet pan pizzas I mean they're looking mighty fine heating up the camera
Since I have folks just getting their appetites back, these two pizzas might be more than enough for sure. So whatever I don't make tonight just adds to my upcoming freezer stash. Okay, so I had a little break. We went out and did some outdoor things. The kids did get to have pizza out of the picnic tables. But now I'm having a little YouTube consultation with the YouTube folks. So that's mama's next thing. And priorities, I got my evening herbal tea seeping for me. It'll be ready by the time we get off this call. Alrighty, so we are getting the bread dough's going. I guess this is number seven and eight, right? We had, I made two. A lot of that is in the refrigerator. Most of the kids had a piece of it, they were fine, but we weren't ravenous pizza eaters tonight, and that's okay. Hey, look, I meal prepped. Lunch is ready for tomorrow. I have two dough balls here resting uh, for about an hour. I have two on my counter that we're gonna package up as our first to go in the freezer. I'm not gonna make two more just because of where we are in life right now. Um, not gonna make two more bake get in the oven tonight because we have leftovers for tomorrow. Um, and so once I get these two loaded, that will be six so far for the freezer. The yeast seems to be just fine. We, we shall continue on. Okay, so it was a cup. I spray each one with, uh, with oil. It was a cup and a half of water. I am going to use all-purpose flour this time. And I will do four cups of flour of the all-purpose flour. That's just some flour from Azure that I have in these separate containers here. And we will get those going. And my little talk with YouTube was nothing serious. It was just them telling me as a creator, other creator things available. After a while, when you're a creator, they reach out and just give you like a contact person to chat about your channel and such with. And it had been a little bit, so that's why I was like, okay, yeah, sure, we can do that. Um, oil, let's see, I gotta get the sugar. And then next is the flour. This is nice, I found my, we just unloaded dishes and got the dishes going again, the cup and a half. Well, that's a drain going. Okay, um, cup and a half measuring cup has been found. I was tired, I am going to use my half measuring cup twice to get that fourth cup in. This does help me feel productive even when I'm tired. Because the bread, I'm like, let's finish a sentence, tired, tired mom, J. Burrow. Because I'm gonna go put my pajamas on and these bread machines will still be going. I think I'll be able to finish these two and maybe get two more going officially tonight. Okay, so I did that. Now, I was supposed to do the salt before, so I have left. Yeah, it'll be okay. I've made enough mistakes in life and it still turns out okay. So, I think the salt was supposed to go in before the flour. Sorry, please all work. Okay. Put it on the dough setting. Future pizzas, future J. Morrell will thank us. Right. And I'm just, whenever I do this, I like to, and I have in the past had a platter set out with all the different little accessories. I have everything sitting out here that's just waiting for the next load. I will. Run my washcloth over that. Just cleaning up our little area. We've got some good layers done in the kitchen. I mean, I chose to spend our afternoon out in the sunshine instead of 
doing even more in the kitchen this afternoon. I did take the rings off of my recent 30 pints of strawberry jam. All of those sealed well, yay! So, taking it gentle tomorrow morning when I'm fresh. When we got that first cup of coffee that tells us we can do all those things. At that time, I will then, oh, and I know my water is on. I have an instant pot I did brown rice in that I want to get some water in tomorrow. That cup of coffee is gonna tell us. You can take a fresh soapy rag over there, just go around the rim there, date everything, right strawberry jam on there. And then we'll load those up and get those put away tomorrow. So I did those, when was that? I think it was Tuesday evening. So tomorrow will be Friday. And we've had some stuff happen. So in between, takes a few days to get everything put away. I'm not going to do any big batch cooking projects or canning projects this weekend. This weekend I am going to totally work in, in and with in reference to the garden. So that is fun. I'm excited about that. And I already told you Travis is loading and hauling stuff tomorrow which will be good and is all garden focused. In our part of Virginia, we are in zone 6B. So that means our last frost date is end of April to middle of May. Folks around these parts usually say you don't put anything in the ground until after Mother's Day. We'll have to look up. You tell me, when is Mother's Day this year? And just like last year, even though I got my garden in my raised bed, even though I got it in late, I got it, it was like third or fourth week of May. So it was only a week or two off of the earliest I could get things in the ground. But that always seems so sad to me because I'll hear other folks in other areas like already having things producing. Those Florida gardeners are sure at it right now. Or other areas, they can get things in the ground, you know, February or March or April. But in the mountains of Virginia, I really have to wait until May. Now on the east coast of Virginia, down Hampton Roads and such area, it's a totally different garden zone. They can get stuff in earlier. I remember when we lived in that area, I would still have big, beautiful flowers out on Thanksgiving. So it's just different as you travel across the state. I'm just gonna put my little my little rooster here to hold some of our measuring spoons. Everything else is dry. That had some wet on it. And this is just where everything is gonna sit and like it as these continue to work for us, even as I go get my pajamas on. <laughs> Oh, and today we did have really good bathroom progress, so now the water is back on in the second bathroom. We can use the sink, we can use the toilet, even though it doesn't have a toilet paper holder in there yet. Uh, in an emergency, you know, because 11 people in two toilets, that's been a fun adventure these last several weeks. So we're back to three, even though there's no lights in there, at least for daytime hours. And he'll be back actually tomorrow working in there, but it's an option. So there's still more painting that needs to be done. The mirror needs hung over the sink. There's some trim work, the toilet's in. Uh, also the cabinet needs hung over the toilet, but they are done with the little custom, like set into the wall shelving that they did for me. He's also gonna hang another shelf up high for me tomorrow and the doors on the custom shelf need painted. But again, like work in progress. And because I am playing my tired mom card tonight, I am just going to use, this is actually, I'm just gonna use Ziploc bags tonight. I'm just gonna write pizza dough and the month and the date. And that's gonna be that. In the past, I have rolled these um, in plastic wrap, but that's okay. You know what though? Okay, I know what I've done in the past. I gotta go back in my brain here. I roll them, I wrap them in plastic wrap, and then in one of these bags I can get like three or four pizzas. That's probably what I should do. Okay, scratch that, let me get these wrapped up.
And look at my rookie mistake. I had to just take this pizza dough out. It's still rising. I did let it rise at least an hour. Again, it's just been a while, so I'm gonna actually take both of these out and just put them in a pot uh, with a cover on it, give them a little bit more time. It had blown up real big there, and um, I know sometimes it needs longer, so here we go. Still too hot to drink, but still getting those few coffee sips in. Good morning. It's coffee o'clock. I'm going to get these bread machines running again. I pulled the last two doughs that I had going that had just finished at bedtime, but just had some other mom life things. I wasn't able to get two more going, but that's okay. We're gonna get some going this morning. I skipped a few steps showing you that time because camera battery issues but anyway got this one on dough this one I think it's now I gotta push that down here we go life this morning I never got to doing the cherry jam with the cherries that I had cooked down and cut down of course we pitted them and everything never got to that earlier this week and with what has been going on here I'm getting you know my mama grace points but that's okay because life on a little pretend farm nothing goes to waste again the pits are already we well, can tell, it's cooked down cherries. Like I technically could still get this going and do this jam today, but I'm not. So that's my mama card that I'm playing, but this will get fed to the pigs and they won't mind. And so it's still putting to use the last five to seven pounds of cherries that we had left from a bunch of bulk cherries that we had because the pigs will eat them and my joke, we'll make bacon out of these cherries. Also today, let me give you a little bathroom update. Okay, so. Um, this isn't the big reveal, but it's a big reveal since last time I showed it. Travis does all of our own electrical. You know, we have the super electrician that lives here. But this is how things are looking. Again, hashtag not done, hashtag not done. No lights in here, but I do think it has come along. I'm trying to like figure out where to show my camera. So we do have our life in here, again, wrapped in agreeable gray which we appreciate. We have the new window in, the new window trim, the nice trim along the floor that I also appreciate. We have the new floor. Now, we have different craftsmen coming in for different things. I don't know if you can see it, but there's some scratches on the wall and some chip paint here. Um, there's, it looked like maybe some paint on this floor a little bit. And then I'm just telling you I, things my eyes see. They did that top shelf for me today and like obviously there is a bunch of spackle. And then this whole wonderful thing, I'm gonna open it for you and show it to you. This will need painted also. So just saying, even though a lot of the paint is done, and my goodness, looks amazing, right? Or am I right, am I right? Looks amazing compared to what we had for sure. Also, that's the shower head they did, but that's gonna actually be changed out to a different one also. I'm showing you the, the positives. The positives are floor is done. Oh my goodness, look at my new vanity. Hello. New toilet, because the other one got broke. New over the toilet, pretty thing. New mirror. And then what I was telling you, this built-in cabinet. I'm not sure if, I, I'm thinking right now, I would have them paint that trim white 
and then I would have them go over these doors with agreeable gray on both sides. Just thinking, but let's have a look. Let's see what it looks like on the inside. So again, they, they custom built this into the wall for me, which I greatly appreciate. And I'm even thinking, they can take those shelves out and like paint the back. Or I mean, do we have more times in life, friends? Do we have more time? I guess my clone could wallpaper that, right? Wouldn't that be pretty to have like some kind of pop in wallpaper? I don't know if it'll happen though. And if not, <laughs> that's okay. Um, Cause agreeable gray will save the day. So this fun thing, these baskets are so precious. So I'm thinking though, maybe we can get a little bit bigger baskets for there. I haven't, um, oh, hey, vlogging Jim Rill. Haven't even taken them out of their wrappers. Just a nice little cabinet here. And then I wanted the smallest functional vanity I could have in here. The other van, the 1963 vanity, like came out a lot farther. And then it was like all the way over here to the toilet. I wanted room for a little trash can back here and the toilet paper roll on this side because there's just not a lot of room between the toilet and the wall, right? This is the kind of stuff we talk about. But before in this bathroom for three years, this was all the room we had for the toilet paper and a trash can. So many adventures there. And that vanity was all the way over. So I wanted some space. I know it's not huge. This is in general, this is a small bathroom, but boy, I'm happy with it. Travis is also, He'll do a bar light there. I'm thinking we'll hang, oh, let's go get my Highland Cow picture and we'll just look at it in here. And th this is a Highland Cow picture. I mean, yes, stain, stain, stain rugs. Okay, we're, we're getting there. We're gonna wrap our whole life in new floor in here shortly. Living in a house renovation. Supplies, okay, but Highland Cow. Highland Cow, and he, well, first off, I mean, he could go up here. Let's just, let's talk to him. Let's see how nice he looks. Whoop, whoop, don't, don't fall, don't fall, buddy. Okay, see, he's looking nice in here. Now, knowing me, I love the agreeable gray. I also love some popping colors. Okay, we had to have a battery change, but what I was saying was, you know, I also got these metal chickens recently for in here. Maybe I'm gonna paint them like bright red or something, I don't know. Maybe that'll be the same day we wallpaper. Ha ha, I'm being so sarcastic. I don't have any time to wallpaper right now, but just saying. I like our little cow in here. Okay, so I used to be able to set this camera in the windowsill of that bathroom that I just can't, but I'm thinking maybe he'll go here. I don't know. We'll see, we'll get there, but he'll visit in here. I'm gonna put him as inspiration just for me to look at. So one day here soon, the next upgrades will be, of course, paint touch ups all around paint that, a bar light, an outlet. Travis has that ready to hook up there. And oh, and then, yeah, I've got one behind me, uh, a fan. I think it's gonna be, I guess it's not a fan with a light. Okay, a uh, question. I've had a couple people ask me, and again, with the lighting, you might not be able to see. This is just one of those drop-in inserts from Lowe's that at least looks like tile. So many of my younger kids are excited about being able to keep like bubble bath and toys up there. I was thinking that this would need some caulk and it looks like he did that today. He caulked around, which is so nice, but look, new faucets, shiny, nice, nice things. I mean, brushed chrome, yay. So the shower head that we have in our other bathrooms has the still like rain shower fall part and then it has the, the head that comes off that you can use, which is good for hosing off kids. So he put that on there today temporarily, but he's gonna bring another one of those back. And then this is, so I always call this, you know, my bathroom. This is where I, as a mom, live and keep my things. Plus it was bathe younger children. They actually have drawers though with toothbrush and things in the bigger hall bathroom that I've showed you. So these are actually two deep drawers, even though they look like four. Uh, and he asked me about the handles for that. And I said for him to try to match these. And then this, it's a medicine cabinet also. We have, let's see, yes, it opens this size. We also have these up in, uh, our main bathroom. So again, it's a nice day. It's not done, but it's getting so close. And the water, I mean, things are hooked up. Oh my, let's do the first, uh, the toilet flush. Woo, that was kind of wild. 
I think that's just because it had never, it's never been used. Did you work? Okay, yay. And again, these floors, like I say, we will wrap our whole lives in them. Now we do have original hardwood in, let's see, this room, which of course we used as our dining room back in the baby kitchen days and the baby kitchen's still there. And then the three bedrooms on this end of the house have these hardwood floors. But I think honestly, what we're gonna do is these floors are just, you know, a thing. And I believe they're a floating floor, so there's no glue or anything going on. I'm still thinking I would like those because we've got areas like we've got the funky carpet out there and in the fourth bedroom down that way. And then of course in the baby kitchen, we have this. Oh, we have, we have laundry baskets too because this is our makeshift. This is where Travis folds the laundry right now so baby kitchen has been <laughs> has been used i knocked some things down no so oops but this floor in here also will be new uh need to be new the floor in this this is the fourth bedroom that'll need to be new um, of course all of these things are going to be knocked out that pot was not used for cooking purposes hello stomach bug that's all i'm gonna say <laughs> so anyway i would like the floor that's in the new bathrooms to just be spread throughout the whole house and into every bedroom. And, you know, I think it's got like a 20 year life or so. At some point we'll do something else, but hey, at least for a while it'll work. And hello, my Walmart bags, that fell off the wall. This is still waiting for this to be fixed for the main bathroom. All right, we've 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 got we got lots of projects going on here, okay? We got, grow light situations happening in the works. This is where Travis has been working. So anyway, projects in the works here. I just wanted to show you the pizza that is done. So we are putting basically eight pizzas in the freezer, all rolled up. Yes, that got a little wheat dough in it. I won't tell if you don't. Um, so yeah, two in a bag, two in a bag, four in a bag, eight, eight pizzas ready to go for later. And this is how the freezer meal freezer is looking. Lots of room going on. I am going to put um, these little breakfast sandwiches back down there. But let's see. I guess I will move this up. And just for now, until I get, you know, producing more 9 by 13 meals, I'm just going to put these dough bags in here. They won't be able to stay there. And really this is like, you know, probably four different pizza nights for us. So that is nice. So anyway, friends, I am not ending this video in put together mama attire. I mean, what is new? But yeah, we've, we've been, dealing, been dealing with the things here. So I'm sure I told you earlier in the video because this was supposed to be a day in a life and this is who I am that uh, Sunday night I had one, say it with me, you heard this, Sunday night I had one kid go down by, oh, between Tuesday night, early Wednesday morning, I had, I count my kids, four to five, I had five more go down, that brings us to six. I had another family member go down, so that's seven. Then uh, Thursday, when I believe when I was trying to film uh, this little bit of day in the life, um, by Thursday evening I had another teenager go down then yesterday tr mr travis went down so guess who did not haul what is it called wood chips and haul organic fertilizer all day mr travis did not get to do that yet but we called we let them all know you don't want them to come today so it's saturday hopefully by monday we did hear back that the wood chipper that we rented for the full week there was just one little caveat of as long as the people who had it before us didn't decide to keep it longer they got that back so he can pick that up in about 48 hours Yesterday was really rough on him. He never has a day where he just like stays in bed for 24 hours, but that was yesterday. By Monday, he'll be picking up the stump grinder. And so all next week, he'll be grinding the stumps. And then once that goes back, then he'll have to, you know, projects get moved, just like my filming projects and all that, the farm projects get moved. After a week of the stump grinding, then he'll be able to add back to the top of his list to go get the wood chips and the fertilizer that we need. And I'm saying fertilizer, compost. I grew up always with horses. We always had 
aged horse manure to put on any flowers that we were growing. And then even like when Travis and I were at our first house in the city, I would haul back old grain bags full of aged horse manure from my mom's horses to put on my city gardens, my flower beds. So, but I know that's real hot commodity stuff. Now we do have, so now we're gonna talk about manure. Okay, you ready? <laughs> so, manure talk with Jay Morell in her two day old pajamas. So, I was giving you though a family update. Let me see, let's go back to that, then remind me, I'll stick a pin in the manure, ha <laughs> ha. Um, so Travis went down yesterday, then today my adult son who is at home came home early from work, it's Saturday, and uh, he's not doing well. So the good news is for those who get it, it really does seem to be a 24 hour thing. It like goes through your system and then by the, the next 24 hours you just need to like recuperate. So there's several folks in our house now who had it earlier in the week and they're just hanging out with us resting and watching movies. I am on the edge of how I'm gonna go. I don't know. And just like, you know, today I'm not feeling super. I didn't feel super yesterday. I haven't had the same symptoms exactly that some of them have had, but I don't know how things are gonna go with me. So that's why I'm wrapping up this video. But wait, let's talk about manure for a minute. And also remember that by the time you see this video, my videos are, are usually, I mean, the closest they would be are a week apart. If I get behind, my videos will be a week apart. I am never filming a video and then like the same day or the next day or even three or four days later getting it out. It's a whole big process to get my videos out. It's a lot to film, a lot to edit, a lot to watch through multiple times. Um, I don't even watch through them multiple times. I have some folks who work for me behind the scenes and I will have them watch it once or twice before it gets to me. That's just a whole like behind the scenes YouTube thing. So by the time you see this video, we're probably two weeks at least past this. So all will be well. But this is a day in the life plus a couple extra days added in for fun. But back to manure talk, we do have aged horse manure, of course chicken houses, of course pigs, and rabbits. With the rabbits on the good weather days, we've been moving the rabbit tractor around and I want to move them, especially as we get into spring for real, to one of the areas like I'd like to move them next to the area that has the stumps that are going to be gone in the next week because that's just organic. It could go directly on there every day and every day we can move them forward and that'll be helpful. But just because of the size of both new gardens, the garden I want to add in this year, and then the size of the garden that I at least want to get prepped even if it just sits there and, you know, decomposes and, you know, really gets down in that soil and helps turn into something for the next year. That is just going to take a lot of compost, more than what we have. Like it's going to be several big compost piles full, I'm pretty sure. And so I definitely have manure from my pigs and from my chickens. It's like chicken house cleaning out season, um, all of those good things. I have a lot of manure that can go and compost for the next year and will be ready for next year. And I do have aged manure, especially from the horse that can go directly on it this year, but not enough to make two whole new garden areas. What I have is enough to probably like add in and go with my raised beds and, and sure sprinkle about, but I need more. So that's why we're gonna haul in some also. And the hauling in price, I believe it was $20 a scoop. He said it was a mix of turkey, cow, and maybe it was chicken. I don't know. Turkey, cow, and something else. And he has heated all of it, and he rolled it all, and he sifts it all. So it sounds like good, decent, organic compost from our area. So mama here i'm gonna take my beverage and go sit in my chair we're going to have a day two of a movie marathon let's see yesterday we watched we watched national treasure and then we watched the original charleston heston 1958 moses movie and that was a good bit of our evening and then today on the movie plans let's see we are starting with fiddler on the roof i always there's certain movies i love to watch like every year so Fiddler on the Roof, we need to get a watch in. And then we're gonna watch The Truman Show. And then 
my eight-year-old suggested not at the museum and we're just going to check in <laughs> after that and see how we're all feeling so thank you so much for watching this day in the life plus a few extra days making this big batch pizza dough listening to the garden plans you've seen that you know things are in the works and i'll see you real soon with another brand new video bye bye Oh, and a little bonus points I forgot to show you. So we have, even though, you know, electrical's not done, um, I have soap and a hand towel in here. I need to get the little standing hand towel holders. I need to get a fresh one. My other one had rust around the bottom. Uh, if I was a better mom, I would probably paint that. But how I feel today, I'm like, I can't. But why don't I? Well, I'm not. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I'm really liking how small this vanity is as far as like a little bit more room. You know, kids in the bathtub. But... Thing I want to show you. Oh, well, I took these little baskets out of their wrap, so that is good. Again, I know they're not done working in here, um, but I did put my refillable hand soap in there, and then pictures in the bathtub. So I do think the Highland cow is going to go there. Obviously, the other thing on their list, like we need a whole shower bar situation, so we'll be picking out a new shower curtain. This little goat picture uh, we got at Hobby Lobby, I don't know, was it six months ago or something? It was in, in anticipation of this bathroom, and I'm glad I did because that, that picture's not there now. I'm going to find a home for that, and then we have that little decorative piece, and then this one that we got recently at Hobby Lobby. So I'm just looking at my little Hobby Lobby art collection and getting inspired for this bathroom. Now something I do think I'm going to do, I was just watching this morning as kids wash their hands and there's a lot of back spray here. And in our other new bathroom, there's a little piece built into the vanity that was up a couple inches. So obviously I'm gonna need some kind of backsplash here. And you know, I love that pressed metal, but it's really plastic. And we like wrapped our whole lives in it with the baby kitchen and I'd always wanted it. Anyway, I love mixing that in places. And I've got a few places I'm gonna mix it in some more in the, uh, the Mega Mama kitchen. But I'm gonna rock their world and have them put that here, like starting from, cause they, there's a little trim piece that they can get with it. Probably just starting here, yeah, with the end of the vanity and they can cut it and work with it and it's a thing and it'll just go across the top. And then the other place I thought, okay, if we're doing that, I might have them do it around the top of the shower too. Not that it's gonna necessarily need it, but I like it. So let's just put it around the top of the shower too. I think it'll be nice. Bonus, bonus points, extra look and thoughts at the bathroom again today. Now that we have started using it this morning and uh, we will go from there. I don't know, like I'm thinking thoughts now, what I'm looking at, what can I do under that shelf? It's obviously a high shelf. I don't necessarily like the white brackets, but what else, what else would I have done? This is YouTube life. I'm dropping memory cards. Um, I don't know. Can I hang things there? I guess I could. I just feel like something decorative should happen underneath that shelf since it's so visible and I don't know what that would be. Huh. Okay. The mom that I like to tell myself maybe I am, but I'm not. <laughs> this other Jamerall in this other universe that's going to wallpaper behind those shelves there. Maybe I could at least do like matching wallpaper under that. I don't Let's stop now. Okay, I'll talk to you in those comments below, friends. Bye-bye.